watch one. I want my own army. I want my own planet. I deserve it. I'm just as important as you. Never in my tea spilling career did I ever think I'd be making a video about a cup. But well, here we are guys. Of all the things that have taken the internet by storm, I still wouldn't have guessed that a cup would make it to that list. A cup. The Gen Zs are particularly obsessed with it. To be honest, I wasn't gonna cover this because I just felt like we had come too far as the human race and I didn't wanna give the aliens the satisfaction of laughing at our madness. I mean, we've had memes about avocado toast and dancing cats but a cup? Really? But then news reached me that this cup y'all are toppling each other over has been found to be poisonous. When I heard that, I sat up very quickly and thought, okay, now this is a matter of national security, and so here we are, loves. Let's talk about the Stanley Cup. Whew. Rumor has it, Corgi came out with new Stanleys. We must find them. I've seen videos, pictures. This better be good. Yay! Guys. Yes. Everyone talks about this one, but I like the bigger size. Why am I obsessed with the green one? I have never seen this one. We have to get it. Oh. Yes. This was so fantastic. My new favorite. Target. Target. If I like it, I'll just grab it in a different color. If I like it, I'll just grab it in another color. If I like it and they have another color, I'll just grab it. But seriously, what is it with you guys in this cup? I've seen people camping outside Target like it's a Beyonce concert or something. Just waiting for a limited edition Stanley Cup. Are y'all for real? Like, are you guys okay? I get it, it comes in really cool colors, so walking around with one makes you feel like you come from generational wealth and probably have a trust fund. But is it really worth sacrificing your dignity and sleep for? I mean, if you think I'm kidding, take a look at this video. We spent the night at Target for the new Stanley Starbucks cup. Yes, I know what you're thinking. It's a cup. Why, what are you doing? On the other hand, I love my daughter and we were bored. So we got there like at 1.40 in the morning and it was a ghost town because it was Target in the middle of the night. But once we saw the cup, we knew we were in the right spot. We brought the new puppy with us and just waited for people to show up. And they did. So we hopped out of the car, brought the chairs and made sure we were first in line. So it was almost three o'clock in the morning and that's when people started to show up. I mean, these people are dedicated. We just watched one by one and the line was massive and it was cold, like 40 degrees cold, but we got through it and I ordered Whataburger delivered in line. So if you know, you know how you Done. At this point, the store is about to open and look at this line. Guys, are, are we okay? No. The answer is no. This lady came out to make sure we didn't burn the place down, and once the doors were open, it was go time. And for the most part, it was pretty calm. There wasn't much looting or rioting, just a few small fires. That's it. And finally, we got one. Just one, because Target's doing this one Stanley per household thing. I don't know. Either way, we're tired, we're hungry, it's over, and it's time to enjoy the sweet taste of victory. Thank you. And don't even get me started on the fights breaking out over this thing. I've seen fully grown citizens with 32 teeth throw elbows over a cup. It's like Black Friday, but instead of TVs, it's a cup. Honestly, I never thought I'd see the day where people would risk it all for a cup. She's crying over her Stanley. Did he get a day? I didn't get a it's the fact that he fell on the nasty floor. The strato? Everything. Target is literally turning into a war zone with people jumping on top of each other just to get their hands on the viral Tumblr cup. I mean, if you thought the TJ Maxx one was a wild ride, then trust me, no one would have prepared you for this Stanley saga. It's like a whole new planet has been formed just for the Stanley community. I'm talking about dedicated accounts, Facebook groups, Stanley collectors, you name it. And don't even get me started on the raffles for limited edition colors. Guys, this has gotten way out of control. I thought this craze would come and go real quick, but I was immediately met with a rude shock after the Stanley's Valentine edition. I mean, being a limited edition, everyone wanted to have it. We witnessed human beings with logic behaving like animals in the zoo. Guys, things have gotten so bad at Target that even police had to come in real fast. Look at this. sold 
out in under five minutes. Is it really that serious? Target employees were just watching in awe as this madness unfolded before their eyes. And let me tell you, Target even had to put a limit on the number of Stanley tumblers that you can buy because people are out here spending all their inheritance clearing the shelves. And you know what's worse? Some of these people aren't even genuinely thrilled with the thought of having a Stanley Cup. I thought I had seen it all until I learned that people were reselling them and they are actually making a lot of money doing it. Like a lot. They're selling the cups at over double the price and I don't even know if this is right or even allowed. What happened to just taking one and leaving the rest for other people too? Dance, dance, dance and do your little dance, 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 you know it. Yo, the people were so upset because I spent my hard earned money to do a waffle for y'all all day today. They was mad. See, only got one pink. Y'all, so this is the rules. You have to have them. They are 20 a slot and it's 20 spots. It's only 20 slots. You're gonna see everything on live. I'm gonna turn the, the iPad around to my computer and we're going to do, it's like a, what, what wheel is that? Like a wheel of fortune wheel? Okay, so for every cup, there's going to be different sparkle, right? So we had to send it if we want to enter, yes. One winner per cup. Honestly, at this point, using a Stanley Cup in public is beginning to look cringe because I'll just feel like people are looking at me like a member of a cult or something. And y'all, let's backtrack a little bit because for you to understand this Stanley Cup obsession, you must first understand where this craze started. So there are two theories to this. The first one goes something like this. This lady called Danielle recorded a video about an incident where her car caught on fire and everything burnt beyond recognition, but guess what braved the fire and remained unscathed? A Stanley cup. It was as good as new. Not only that, but the Stanley Cup still had ice in it. Like after a raging fire that burnt literally the entire interior of the car, the Stanley Cup was the only survivor. Everybody's so concerned about if the Stanley spills. But what about the milk? The fire yesterday still has ice in it. And when people saw that, they were sold. Suddenly, attention was on this cup with people going, hmm, so this cup that I've been ignoring could hide my treasures plus myself during a fire. It doesn't stop there, y'all. The company took this opportunity to wow customers even further. So they responded to Danielle, not only by sending her more Stanley Cups, but replaced her car. When I tell you that this gesture worked wonders, it did, because people have never been so invested in a cup like they are right now. Hey Danielle, my name is Terrence Riley. I'm the president of Stanley. And we've all seen your video. Wow, what an ordeal. And we're all really glad you're safe. Thanks for sharing the video because wow, it really shows how Stanley, our Stanleys are built for life. Because what it went through with you, I couldn't think of a better example of our product's quality. But anyway, we're glad you're safe. I've seen a lot of comments that we should send you some Stanleys. Well, we're gonna send you some Stanleys. But there's one more thing. We've never done this before, and we'll probably never do it again, but we'd love to replace your vehicle. Yeah, all of us at Stanley, we'd really like to replace your vehicle. So check your DMs for details. Thanks, be safe. Cheers. And going to buy my first Stanley. What a fantastic company. This is awesome. Definitely buying a Stanley now. This is a sign to buy a Stanley just to hold my important documents in. I see a new range coming. Stanley passport holder, Stanley documents holder. Well, looks like I'm buying a Stanley cup now. As a marketer, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Anyways, it goes without saying that since then, you'd barely find any Stanley cups on the shelves because they're literally ordered and booked before they even arrive, which explains why people would rather their sacrifice sleep in the comfort of their homes for this cup. Now, I don't know how true this story is, as some say that the cup was placed in there after the car had been burnt, as much as people are giving the cup the benefit of the doubt, because I mean, maybe it is true that it survived the fire and even still had ice inside. But what are the odds that even the straw, which is clearly made out of plastic and was protruding, wasn't burnt? The plastic straw and rubber bits around the handle somehow not melted around an entire melted interior and everyone believing it? 
made my day. I don't know guys, these companies will go to whatever lengths for marketing. Anyways, regardless of the case, the incident was such a defining moment for Stanley. First for the Tumblr surviving the fire, and secondly for how they handled the situation and won the hearts of many. So yeah, the marketing team at Stanley are geniuses. And this brings us to the second theory as to why the Stanley Cup is making people behave like we're in the Stone Age period. Again, it's about marketing. Believe it or not guys, Stanley Cups have been gathering dust on the shelves for almost five years, and no one even looked at them twice. Sales were so bad that the company wasn't planning to make more of them. Like literally, it was the most underperforming Stanley product ever until something happened. So the marketing team sat down and thought long and hard about how they would clear their last stock, get their money back, and never produce this cup again. So what did they do? They started sending them to influencers. You see, in the past, the Stanley Cup's target market was the typical customer. Farmers, campers, and generally people who spent most of their time outdoors, but no one bought them. Or at least let's say they just weren't a go-to cup because they're like hundreds of thousands of brands with the same, and the Stanley Cup was just part of the bandwagon. Then they said, you know what? Let's send a few pieces to influencers. You guys, that's how we ended up here because you see the influencers of this generation present one thing, the lifestyle we all want. But not just that, they specifically sent cups to influencers that represented a younger audience, the Gen Zs, the Gen Alphas. Remember, these are kids, so they are super impressionable. Once you sell them a dream, they will sing about it until their parents go get it for them. So what happened when these kids started seeing their favorite influencers not only use, but also rave about these cups? Everyone put their brains on the floor and the rat race began. Now, how genius is that? The cops are coming right there to make sure the ladies are not fighting over the cup. I don't know about y'all, but this second theory makes much more sense than the first one about a burning car, but if you really think about it, both of them could have just been marketing tactics from the company because at the end of the day, the goal was to make sales and boy, aren't they making bank. It worked. Now, here's another genius bit that even took this whole situation to new unbeatable heights. The company knew that using influencers alone wouldn't make the cut because people get tired of influencers influencers super fast and don't even trust them that much anymore. So to make this long lasting, they also sent these cups to teachers, nurses, and pretty much people who actually need them as they went about their day. So when you see your teacher with one and hop online and see your favorite influencer raving about theirs, as a kid, you'd want one too. Ever since then, people have lost their minds to Stanley Cups. As we speak, Stanley has an email list of over 250,000 people who are waiting for the cup to get back in stock. And it's not just kids, but even grown Ups. Stanley's president even revealed that one elderly lady sent a note to them to ask that when she passes away, she wants her ashes to be buried in a Stanley tumbler, which goes to show you how a good marketing strategy can make you a millionaire overnight, especially if you tap into your customer's emotions. But seriously guys, let's talk about this, cause it goes deeper than y'all think. So while people are acting shocked over the Stanley Cup craze, I will play the devil's advocate because this isn't just a Gen Z thing. Yes, I said it. This is a trend as old as time. The Stanley Cup situation just goes to show how we're obsessed with overconsumption and basically fantasizing about the stuff we want to possess. Think back to 2015 when Nevia Men Aftershave had folks going wild. I mean, who would have thought that a simple grooming product could have caused such a frenzy? But hey, it happened. And then there was the Anastasia Brower, revolutionizing the way we sculpt our eyebrows. We all know how people embarrass them themselves with this just because everyone wanted to experience that feeling of wanting to achieve those perfectly arched eyebrows. And let's not forget the human-sized dog beds of 2023, which we never needed, but people went bananas for it regardless. But it doesn't stop there, loves. We've seen it all, from skincare obsessions to gym culture reaching its pink, not for health, but for aesthetics. Oh, and those anti-wrinkle straws. Don't even get me started. It's like every few months, there's a new must-have item sweeping the market, and we all fall for it hook, line, and sinker. So let's set the record straight. The Stanley Cup obsession, it's just another chapter in our never-ending quest for the next big thing. It's not about Gen Z or any specific generation. It's about human nature, guys. We've always been suckers for the latest trends, always chasing after that fleeting sense of validation that comes with owning the hottest item on the market. It just looks like a huge cup that's way too big. Everybody has one. I don't have one. Well, everybody I guess you're not has in. one? Yeah, everybody has one. Why? It's the thing. And they all have them this size? Yeah. To drink lots of water. Maybe I should get Carol one. 
for a kidney stone. <laughs> Gotta flush that thing out. But here's the kicker. While we're all busy chasing after these viral products, these companies are laughing all the way to the bank. They just know how to tap into our desires and how to make us believe that owning their product will somehow elevate our status, make us more desirable, and you know what? We fall for it every single time. And now, in the age of social media and TikTok, it's easier than ever to get caught up in the hype. We see our favorite influencers raving about these products, showcasing their seemingly perfect lives and we want a piece of that pie too because let's face it having these things isn't just about owning a product it's about owning a lifestyle and about projecting a certain image to the world what do you do what i do I'm a pimp, P-I-M-P, if you don't know, you do now. All right, moving on to the scariest part of this whole Stanley saga, which is actually the reason why I made this video in the first place. It's about the poison thing. Apparently, it's not all glitz and glam. Nope, the much coveted cup has some toxic secrets lurking within its shiny interior, which would be super sad, because not only are guys fighting over the cup, but it turns out it could be actually harmful to your health. It all started on the very same platform that has been responsible for all the crazy attention the Stanley Cup has been receiving, TikTok. TikTokers started making videos about the cup having lead, as in the stuff you definitely don't want anywhere near your beverages. At first, people brushed it off, thinking it was just another internet rumor. Ironically enough, these concerns came right around the same time the race for a Stanley Cup was gathering momentum. But people did not give that much thought to it. But then came the Valentine's Edition release, and things took a dark turn. People only started paying attention when a mother tested her three-year-old Stanley for lead and the test came out positive. This was a super horrific experience because lead can lead to a whole list of developmental issues for a child. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with lead testing, let me break it down for you. If the Q-tips from the test kit remain orange, that's a negative, no lead. But in this case, the tips turned the hottest pink imaginable, signaling dangerously high levels of lead. Yikes. However, we couldn't just take one person's word for it, so people caught on to this and started mass testing their Stanleys, and yep, all of the tests came out positive. Every single one that was done the right way. And we're not talking about a slight hint of lead here. We're talking about levels that could seriously mess with your health real bad. There we go. Slide open the sleeve, and there's the yellow liquid. We put a little bit of the yellow liquid on there and we rub it. And if it turns pink or red, which it is turning pink down in there, you can see it turning pink, and you can see it turning pink here. Um, that means that the lead is bioavailable, and if your child touched this, that they would be getting lead dust on their hands. What we need to do is advocate that all of the lead be removed from kitchenware, especially items that might be used by a child, there's no excuse for there to be lead in an item like this. Also, I want you to know the only uh, test kits that are reasonable and um, that work are the lead checks. The other ones that people are using are not good. They're fraudulent test kits. They don't work. Please don't use those. There's yet another mother who had gotten Stanley's for her entire family, and when she tested it for lead, it came out black. When, remember, we're only looking for two colors, either orange or pink or maybe reddish. But hers was somewhere between brown and black, so really, what is going on with these cups? Could these mean that there are more harmful chemicals that people should be concerned about. Then it is 4.30 in the morning. My husband has to go in. We're early to work. We got the whole lead test for Stanley's. As you can see, we have quite a few. We fell for the craze. I look crazy. Good news, I got the lead test. Um, bad news, there's color on these. They have lead in them. Do you see that? Do you see that? throw away your Stanleys or at least put them in a box in hopes they recall. Love somebody that did not believe this and tested it because they are hoping to have kids and have gotten like mold poisoning in the past. Thanks, Stanley. But that's not even the craziest part, y'all. Here's yet another person who had bought two Stanleys, the real one and the counterfeit one. Believe it or not, the real one turned out to have a super high amount of lead while the fake one had none. I've seen the rumors that there is lead in the Stanleys in the dupes, and so we're gonna put it to the test and see once and for all if that is true or not. I'm not gonna lie, this is like a little pink, but not like 
Not a ton. It's definitely changed a little, but this is the color that it would be if it was like lead detected. I don't know. What does half... This one is not swabbed at all. This one was from the Stanley. Okay, and now I'm gonna try the dupe. Wait a second. That one doesn't have any pink at all. Shock to the dupe. Doesn't have any pink at all. This is the Stanley's. I'm gonna lay them next to each other. This is just wet. This one was the Stanley. This one is the dupe. Okay, <laughs> I'm probably gonna throw my Stanley away, I'm not gonna lie. Um, let's just say that just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's better. But this isn't the part that blew my mind. When confronted with the news that their precious cups might be poisoning them, some people's reactions were, well, let's just say mind boggling. I like, there were people actually out there who said that they didn't care and the thought of drinking out of a cup with lead made them feel cool. My Stanley cup has lead in it. Honestly, that just makes me feel really cool. Kind of badass. <laughs> kind of old-timey and coquette, honestly. Ugh, I lack no words. Then there's this other one who said that she'd rather consume all the lead in the world than give up her Stanley Cup. Like, she straight up said lead had nothing on her. Like, I'm fine with lead poisoning. This thing is amazing. But this one's amazing, and I love it, and I'll probably get the cream color soon. So... Lead poisoning got nothing on me. And if you thought that was the worst, someone even asked for recommendations on what she could use to drink her water now that the Stanley was off the table. Like seriously? Suddenly the only cup in the world is a Stanley and nothing else? I am so upset to find out that this has lead in it. Like, am I literally getting lead poisoning from hydrating myself? So now I'm like, okay, what? water bottle am I gonna get? And I'm like, should I get the Simple Modern one? But now I'm freaking out because I'm like, well, what if I buy it and that also has lead? So I need someone who has a Simple Modern water bottle to please lead test it and reply back to this because like, what are we supposed to be drinking out of? I'm so scared. My goodness, what have we become? This is exactly why I said the whole Stanley craze is giving cult vibes. Anyways, love, Stanley finally broke their silence on the matter and yep, they admitted that their cups indeed have lead. A Stanley spokesperson clarified all these by saying, yes, lead is used in the manufacturing process, but the product needs to become damaged in order to expose the lead. Uh. Excuse me? So basically we're just supposed to trust that our cups won't spring a leak and poison us? No thanks. The spokesperson further clarified that on the bottom of each Stanley cup, there's a circular barrier made of stainless steel, which covers a pellet that contains the lead. They said the pellet is necessary because it seals off the cup's vacuum insulation and that it isn't accessible unless the stainless barrier comes off, which they admit is very possible, but rare. On the contrary, so many people have reported that the barrier at the bottom of their Stanleys have come out which basically means that they're exposed to lead. Also, if lead is only present at the bottom of the cups, then why are some tests turning positive for lead inside the cups? There are way too many questions at this point, but literally no conclusive answers, so... If that's not enough to make you question whether a Stanley Cup is worth the risk, I don't know what is. So here we are, loves, in the middle of cup mania. People are losing their minds over a mere cup, sleeping outside stores, throwing punches, all for what? Because if it's true that there's a bit of contamination in the cup, then basically y'all are competing for a sip of victory from a tainted trophy. I just can't wrap my head around it. But hey, that's the world we live in, I guess. Stay tuned for more jaw-dropping, eyebrow-raising stories because the year has just started and this level of madness we're witnessing, who knows what other surprises await us.